Today we'll show you how to get started with the Check MK appliance. So our today's task is to get the Check MK appliance up and running. In this video we are going to use the virtual appliance. It's very similar to the hardware appliance. Uh, of course, we just use the virtualization environment and with the hardware appliance, you would have to connect simply a monitor and keyboard to the appliance and the rest is the same. Um, so for the video, we are going to use um, VirtualBox. VirtualBox is a free virtualization you probably know. You can use it on your PC, it's free, so you can do everything we do here. Uh, in a productive environment, of course, you would uh, use VMware or Hyper-V or something like that. Uh, in VMware, you can import the image directly without any, any conversion. If you use Hyper-V, we have linked an article. You need to convert the uh, OVA image for that purpose. Um, but the rest is the same. So let's get started. Let's have a look. Let's, uh, we, uh, you already have downloaded the, the OVA image. Right, exactly. So can we do, we can just start by importing the appliance and have a look on the first boot. Yeah, let's get some basic check and K up and running. Right, let's do it. All right, so we're going to start by navigating through the uh, to the um, OVA template. I already downloaded it to a folder, so I can just select it here. Go to next, then I get a summary what is going to happen, everything is fine and we can leave it. How many, how many RAM would you suggest for the VirtualBox image here? Because it's preset to 4 gigabytes. Right, it's starting with uh, two CPU cores and four gigabytes of RAM. Um, for production deployment, I would suggest at least eight gigabytes of RAM. Two cores are fine to start with, Yes. Um, depending on the number of hosts and services you are monitoring. So this is a good starting point, but you probably have to adapt those settings later on when your okay. monitoring grows. Good. Right, so I'm just gonna import this. That takes a few moments depending on the speed of the drive. And then we are there. So this is basically the um, virtual machine we just created. We imported it from the template. So we are ready to run, aren't we? Right, Let's we can start started. with the third boost. Okay. So that's exactly the same screen you get if you use the hardware appliance and attach a monitor on the keyboard? Right, exactly. That was the boot manager. It basically shows you which appliance version you are running. Um, and everyone who's using Linux knows this black background with some text lock on it. And then we already get the selection screen for the language. Um, we're going to stick to English here. And that's a good default. So we move on. And then there is a data partition within the appliance that contains all the data. Um, separated from the firmware that has to be partitioned on the first run because of course you could change the size so depending on the size it does the initial um, format and then we are taken to the dashboard basically so this is the console as you said if you had the hardware appliance and connected a monitor to it you would see exactly the same screen exactly the same screen right um, so now we can uh, make the initial settings. Yeah, you have to read the small things at the bottom. Right. So press F, which is it F1 for configuration. Right, we are pressing F1. Then we are taken to the configuration menu. Um, there we are going to start with a network configuration because to get started with monitoring, we need some network. So we actually bring the appliance into our local network. Right, exactly. So that we can access it from from our browser and stuff. Yeah, right. So we give it an IP address, a subnet mask. Oh, you, you just I omitted one, one dot. <laughs> you can cut that out. That's right. And we want to give it a default gateway. So that's basically the initial network configuration um, that has been applied in the background. So we already have network okay. connectivity. Um, the next thing we want to do is to set a device password. Um, that has two purposes. One is to um, secure this console screen we are just uh, 
viewing so not so next so time you need the password if you want to change anything here right exactly when the appliance boots yeah. you need to put in the um, password just to make sure nobody can fiddle around with your settings who's not authorized yeah, okay. um, the second use case is the web configuration which we will see in a few moments um, and for that we want to make sure that we have a proper password set so no one else can access that too so that was that and as a last step for this initial configuration we want to enable the web configuration because that's disabled by default. I'm just going to select enable, confirm that, and that's basically it. We can navigate to back. So it's already running and we don't need to change any. We can leave the console now. Right, exactly. Perfect. So now I'm just going to switch over to my browser window. And there we can type in the IP address we just set. And with a bit of luck, <laughs> We will reach the appliance. Right. And you see blazing fast, we are landing on the login page. I'm going to put in the password we just configured. I don't want to save it. And then we are on the main menu of the web configuration. So now the next thing we want to do is to have a look at the device settings. And there we can see a lot of settings. Um, some of them, them we will cover um, because we need them to get started. Um, so I would suggest we start with the time zone because that's really important to have a proper time zone configuration um, so all the uh, timestamps are matching in yes. the web interface um, later on. Um, as we are sitting in Germany, I'm just going to select the appropriate time zone. There it is. Save and apply. And we are taken back to the main page. The next thing you want to have a look at is the host and domain name. I'm not going to change it for the moment because it's, it's fine um, for this video. Yep. But depending on your network, of course, you want to change that accordingly. Um, what's also important are DNS servers. So I'm just going to real quick put in a DNS server here so we have name resolution. Um, if you have an internal or if you have uh, domains configured, you can also configure the suffixes. DNS suffixes here. Saving that too. Um, we definitely want to set an NTP server um, just to make sure that our time is in synchronization with the whole network. Yes. Anyway, we don't have any time setting except that. So it's really important to have an NTP server. Right, exactly. That's really crucial in general. So, and for the last point we need to get up and running, um, you probably want to notify once your site is running. So we are going to configure um, outgoing emails on the appliance. We're just going to put in our SMTP smart host here. Um, of course, there are several options for that, but um, that depends on your local yeah. network. For us, we just need to give the IP address. The usual settings here. Right, exactly. And that's basically it for the device settings. So this is what we need to get up and running. Um, and now so we can... We have a working appliance, cool. <laughs> right, exactly. This is basically the operating system level, which is running. Yeah, we have okay. a properly configured operating system. Really super fast, it. super easy. And, and next step would be to set up a check MK site, isn't it? Yes, exactly. So I'm going to go back to the main menu. Mm -hmm. Then we first need to install a check MK version. Um, because obviously to create a check MK site, we need a setup installed. So may, maybe this needs some explanation. Yeah? The, the CheckMK appliance is a platform for running CheckMK. It's not tied to one specific CheckMK version. So you can install several different versions of the CheckMK at the same time. And for each side, use a different version. Yes. And yeah. uh, appliance is coming barebone without any CheckMK on it, but it's super simple to install one, as we as we'll see. So we when you choose right. the latest stable version. Yeah. As I already showed, I selected the um, file. I downloaded it before. Um, you just need to make sure you, you get the CheckMK version for the appliance. So there's a special build for it. Right, yeah. You see the suffix is CMA. It's CheckMK appliance. So that's important. Um, yeah. But you can see that on the download page. Um, yes, just course. make sure you have yeah. the right extension here. Um, then, and then you can simply say upload and install. Then it will upload the setup to the appliance and install the setup into the appliance. That takes a few moments generally. 
Okay. Right. Now the version is installed. We get confirmation and we see the listing here. So here were all other versions that you would install would be listed here too. Um, and then we can directly um, move to the site management here. And there you see there are no sites yet. So as we uploaded the first version, we can start creating our first CheckMK site. Yeah, so we are basically doing OMD create here. If you if you know CheckMK on the command line, it would be OMD create. Yeah. Um, so that's we need just need to decide about the, the ID of the site. Yeah. I'm just gonna name my site my site. That sounds quite obvious, I think. <laughs> um, then I want to select a version because as you said, we yes, can install multiple versions. So I want to make sure I got the right one. Um, the default administrator name is CMK admin. Um, we'll leave that there. And I'm just going to put in a password. And that's basically it. That's the minimum steps we need to create a site. As you can see, the site is set to auto start. So when the appliance boots, the site, of course, is automatically started. That's right. So yeah. If you create some test sites, you maybe want to switch that off. Yeah, yeah. So or if you have several sites, yeah. not all of them need to be running. You want to take a look at that. In general, you want your sites to start at yeah, boot time. Yeah, the productive sites need to start automatically. Yeah, right. So let's go. Right, I'm going to click Create Site. That takes a few seconds, and then we get the confirmation that the site was created. And then we just have one final step, add a host to the site. Right, basically. And I suggest we monitor the appliance itself as a first step. Um, that sounds reasonable, yeah. So here we see uh, the site was created. We get an overview of uh, the main settings, um, everything we need to know. Um, and with this icon here, we can just um, navigate through to the running site. This is the site we just created here. So I'm just going to log in real quick here. And we are taken to the default dashboard. Of course, there's nothing in it because yeah, there's no host empty yet. Empty monitoring system, yeah, perfect. Right, so I'm just going to navigate to the host menu quickly. Add host to the monitoring, yeah, perfect. Right, and as we said, we just want to monitor the appliance itself. So I'm going to name it localhost. You could use the full qualified name. That depends on your network. Um, so the check and K agent is already installed on the appliance. Um, exactly. It's prepared to monitor itself. Yeah, right. We just have to connect it. Um, so I'm going to go to... And I think it's restricted. Uh, the access is restricted to the localhost, isn't it? So you cannot monitor it from, from remote. You yeah, would have to right. enable that later. If yeah, you, right. I think that it perfectly makes sense that another monitoring system could monitor the appliance. Yeah, definitely. So as an initial setting, it's quite reasonable to restrict it to local hosts. Yeah, so no arbitrary reasons, system yeah. can, can access the agent output, yes. But uh, in a distributed setup, I might want to monitor the appliance from a different host. So now I'm just going to go save and go to service configuration. Okay. And there we see all the services. I'm going to say fix all here. Add everything to the monitoring. Right. And then we can say apply the changes and that's it. And up that's and basically running. it. The plans is up and running. And we also can see all the services. After a few seconds, everything is there. So that's everything. Check in case up and running. We monitor our host. Um, adding more hosts is very easy, of course. Um, right. So I, I think that's really the easiest way to get CheckMK up and running. I hope you liked the video and we see us again next time.